Today I'm going to share with you the coolest things that I sewed in 2016 and some not so cool things. So this year I decided that I wanted to get really serious with sewing and learn lots of new skills and techniques. I wanted to learn how to sew more difficult things like lingerie and pants and to master stretchy fabrics. And because of that I've ended up making some really cool things this year that I am really proud of that I haven't yet shown you guys on my channel. But of course, trying out new techniques I've also made a lot of mistakes and I'll show those to you as well. But let's start with the wins first. So because I wanted to master using stretchy and knit fabrics, I've made some really cute t-shirts this year. Basically because I made a pattern that I really liked and then I discovered that I could whip up a t-shirt in just a couple of hours. Like this floral one, and this robot one, and this kind of emo one. Your planet sucks, man. And this pink one with um, candy hearts all over it. You've probably seen me wearing this a couple of times in my videos, but I never actually said how I made it. Basically, I made the t-shirt in the exact same way as in my Alien Ringer t-shirt, and then I used my t-shirt transfer tutorial to do the hearts. Something that I made just two days ago was this really cute pink bodysuit. The bodysuit is based on a pattern that I made myself using a singlet top and a pair of boy shirt underwear. I've been practicing for a future tutorial for you guys, but I love how it turned out. And it was also my first time using fold over elastic around the neckline and it turned out so well and I'm going to be using fold over elastic all the time in the future now. So the bodysuit looks really good when I'm wearing it on my body, but when it's just hanging there, um, I accidentally made the leg holes on the fabric a little bit too small, so I wasn't able to then stretch the elastic as I was sewing around the leg holes, which made them all like weirdly ruffled. That look perfectly fine and lay flat when they're actually stretched over my legs. But if you saw something like this hanging up like on a rack in a shop, you'd probably think twice about buying it. And while I thought that the boy shorts would add this cute like 40s retro detail, in the end they actually kind of made it look like this weird wrestler's outfit. It still looks really cute and is totally wearable as long as I'm wearing it underneath something like shorts or a skirt or pants. So I still count this as a sewing win. So my number one favorite thing that I have made this year is this halter neck holographic swimsuit. I had a bit of leftover fabric from when I did my holographic sleeves tutorial and because the material is a waterproof stretchy lycra I thought hmm this could be made into a really cool swimsuit. It is the coolest thing like I light up like a rainbow when I go into the sun. For this I actually used a free pattern which I'll link in the description it's by Madeline. The pattern um, doesn't cover a large range of sizes but you probably could hack the pattern to upsize it if you needed to but it's free and taught me how to make this cute halter neck top and it also came with high-waisted bottoms as well. The pattern was a little bit difficult to understand because I wasn't sure how to attach the swimsuit fabric to the lining so what I ended up doing was just basting the pieces together and then sewing it like in the instructions. Oh and recognize the ring on the back? It's that weird ring that I took out of the dress on episode number one of the style pile. Something I really wanted to learn this year was how to make pants and leggings. So I started first with leggings because they seemed easier and this was the first pair of leggings that I made and then I hacked the pattern to add bell bottoms much in the same way as I did with my bell sleeve top except I added the bells to the bottom of the legs instead of sleeves and they turned out so cool and I love them so much I definitely have to be feeling very confident to wear them because they're a pretty out there thing to wear but when I am they're just the coolest most eye-catching thing. And then I made an actual pair of pants. Like how freaking professional do these look? Look at the pockets. So these pants were actually made with a commercial pattern because I'm also trying to get less scared of using commercial patterns. The pattern was from Colette and they're the Moji pants. And can I just say that Colette patterns are amazing. They actually make sense, which was a revelation to me as I've only used really confusing patterns in the past where you just had to kind of figure everything out for yourself. But a style. They have a couple of free patterns as well that you can check out, so. Yeah, go Colette, hashtag not spawn. I just really like 
Colette. I've also made some really cute things this year which aren't clothes. The first was this necklace and brooch set that I actually made on a Patreon live stream. I love this so much because I wear them together with the brooch here and the necklace here and then I can pretend to pour people a cup of tea. And I'm a massive dork so that's like the best thing ever. Okay, so not everything that I have made this year has exactly worked out. The next things that I'll show you I consider to be semi-wins, meaning that they were still wearable in particular contexts. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so this was the first one-piece swimsuit that I tried to make. And when I'd made it, I was really proud of it and I thought it looked awesome and so I immediately took it to the swimming pool to test out. And I jumped in the water and I discovered that the material goes totally see-through when wet. And had I lined the swimsuit? No, absolutely not. So there I was, stuck in the pool with a totally see-through swimsuit on, kind of just hiding down in the water so nobody would see me. And I was miles away from my towel. Luckily, Luciano had also come to the pool with me and was able to grab my towel for me so that I didn't flash the entire populace of the pool. However, just like the pink bodysuit, I'm still able to wear it like as a singlet top when I wear it under pants or shorts with a bra underneath just in case it rains. So that's why it's still a semi-win. It's just not functional as an actual swimsuit, which is kind of what it's supposed to be. And finally, the part that you've all been waiting for, some of the stuff that I've made this year has just flat out failed. I'm actually a bit sad because I have cut up or recycled or donated most of the failed things that I've made this year without recording any evidence of their existence. Like I have on my list here to talk about accidentally pornographic swimsuit top and the boob squish crop top from hell, but I couldn't actually find these pieces anywhere and I think I must have gotten rid of any evidence of their existence. But I can show you the couple of fails that I did hold on to. So remember a couple of videos ago I showed you all how to turn dresses into rompers? Well this one was actually the first attempt I made at that. I accidentally made the crotch way too high up and I'll let the video here speak for itself. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I think I'm gonna try and salvage the top part of it though by just cutting the skirt shorts part off. And then just having it as a cute crop top. So when I first decided that I would try and be less scared of using commercial patterns, I made this. It's so unflattering, just so unflattering. It was made from a commercial pattern, a simplicity quick sew pattern but I don't know what I did wrong or if I did anything wrong or if the pattern's just really, really ugly. <laughs> I kept it because I want to salvage the fabric and I don't know, make like a pillow or something out of it because it's really pretty fabric. Oh yeah, okay, this makes me sad. So when I made my tutorial with Print All Over Me on making pattern clothing, a really cool artist contacted me and said they'd made a store and, and I checked it out and they had the coolest designs and I asked if they could make some of the designs into fabric for me so that I could make clothes out of it and they did, which was awesome. And then I just totally butchered the whole thing. I tried to make this high neck sleeveless shift dress type of thing, but it just really didn't work out and it's really, really unflattering and doesn't fit properly and kind of looks like a bit like a nighty, but it's not even good enough to be a nighty. But obviously I kept the fabric because it's amazing. And after making that pink bodysuit a couple of days ago, I've decided that I'm going to turn this into a bodysuit. And I think that will actually suit the fabric really perfectly. And hopefully I can show you guys how it turns out on my social media channels in the next couple of weeks or so. So I'm embarrassed that I still make pieces that look this bad, but um, this is something that I also made this year. It's meant to be a... Um, crop top with actually like a crisscross neckline like this or something and I actually made it on a sewing machine which isn't really suited for stretchy fabrics um, so that's my excuse for why this exists. God damn it, it actually doesn't look as bad on camera as it does in real life, but trust me, it looks really atrocious in real life. But I would like to still try and make something like this properly 
sometime soon. Okay, this is the last and most embarrassing fail that I have had. So, um, this was actually meant to be a make thrift buy episode and I was trying to recreate these pencil case earrings. I think they're from Shop Eno Eno. And this was my version. I was too embarrassed to even make a make thrift buy episode out of these because they were just so, so bad. I made the items inside the pencil case out of polymer clay, which snapped immediately, as you can see here. I then painted them with acrylic paint, which came off when it came into contact with the glue. And the glue is what I used to seal the edges of the pencil case together because I used PVC and I was a bit worried about using heat to seal the edges because I actually think that's kind of toxic. So I used glue instead. And the whole thing is just such a train wreck. I'm very embarrassed that I made these. But hey, you can't have wins all the time. <laughs> so I hope this video can provide you all with some encouragement if you have ever had a sewing fail or even if you frequently have sewing fails. I've been sewing since the beginning of 2012, so almost five years, and I still completely screw up things which should be pretty basic. But if you don't try, you also won't end up making anything cool either. So don't be afraid of making mistakes or slicing your thumb with a rotary cutter, which is why my thumb is bandaged up here, if you were wondering. Thanks for watching. Check out my beginner sewing resource on my new website if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon for making these videos possible. To become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria.